On this episode of Speed News, we talk about Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, which drivers we think are going to do well at the 2012 NASA National Championships, a cool event called Hyperfest, and GoPro's Move of the Month. Welcome to Speed News, the National Auto Sport Association's video news magazine, with hosts Rob Kreider and John Lindsay, joined by an ever-changing group of NASA members and staff. Speed News keeps you up to date on all of the happenings around the NASA motorsports world. Because at NASA, we drive harder. Hello and welcome to the August edition of Speed News. I'm your host, Rob Kreider. Along my side, fresh from a Magnum PI lookalike contest, is uh, John Lindsay. How are you doing, John? <laughs> I'm doing real well, Rob. How are you? Great, great. You have a Ferrari. I know you're a Porsche man, but it seems like with that, uh, the look you got, you think you'd be a Ferrari man. I, I'm so big and goofy, I just don't fit that well. But, uh, yeah, I definitely, uh, you know, I took second place to a retired den dentist from Cincinnati in the lookalike contest. So, eh, you know, I'm hoping for better next year. <laughs> Outstanding. All right, and our guest host this month is the Mid-Atlantic Region National Regional Director is um, Chris Cabetto from Richmond, Virginia. How are you doing in Virginia, Chris? Uh, everything is great over here. It's, uh, it's a wonderful day in uh, Richmond, Virginia. All right, very good. Uh, hey, Rob, what have you been up to? I hear you've been a traveling man lately. Yes, actually, I just stepped off a plane from mid-Ohio, not mid-Ohio, but uh, more than northern Ohio, where I was at uh, not the mid-Ohio complex where the NASA National Championships are going to be, but I was actually at a different track called um, Derby Downs. Actually, it was a uh, soapbox derby race that my son was doing, and uh, I was a crew chief for that, so I'll show you guys a picture here. And that's him uh, proudly showing his uh, third place trophy. We picked up a podium finish there. And wow, that's, uh, that's great. the top of the hill there, Derby Downs. Well, it looks wow, like great. the boy's doing it right. He's got a uh, NASA sticker on there and everything. Well, of course, we got a NASA sticker on there. Man, we got a future NASA race car driver, hopefully, in the family there. So uh, we got to represent if we can. Now, that takes me to uh, talking about Ohio. Now, John, you do this motorsports tourist column for Speed News, which is a great column. And uh, I know you and Chris both have experience over there at Mid-Ohio. So, John, why don't you start off and tell us a little bit about the complex, because a lot of NASA members are going to be heading to Mid-Ohio in September for the 2012 National Championships. Well, i got to tell you, Rob, Mid-Ohio is an absolutely beautiful track. The first time I raced there, I was used to uh, Willow Springs and Button Willow out here in California. And... I thought I'd made a wrong turn because when I went into the track, it looked absolutely like a state park or a country club. And I thought I'd messed up and uh, got my direction scrambled. But what an absolutely beautiful place. Uh, you know, great facility, rolling hills, great old growth forest, uh, and an, just an absolutely beautiful place to spend some time. Uh, and on top of that, an absolutely excellent track to drive on. Uh, it's got a flow like no other. It really is an outstanding track to drive, and uh, all around you've got great restaurants. Uh, I do the, you know, I talk about those in the Motorsports Tourist column a little bit. Uh, you can get just about everything. There's a great steak place called KC's that I like to go to. Uh, you know, for a big guy like me, the uh, selection of pies there is always a real hit. So definitely uh, looking forward to getting out to mid-Ohio here uh, in just a couple of weeks for the Nationals, Rob. So when you say it's like a state park, you're saying we have uh, flush toilets or uh, more like a button willow toilet? Uh, you know, they're actually very nice uh, facilities there. The, the, uh, I took advantage of the uh, shower facilities once and it, it kind of reminded me of uh, uh, going back to uh, the days in the, the locker room because you really get to know your fellow uh, <laughs> participants that join you in the shower <laughs> because... There's no walls, so it was a little strange. And, uh, I see. A little, little different Well, this is a family me, but, show, uh, so uh, I'm going to have to see right. you guys off topic. We'll talk about your shower stuff on a different episode. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, Rob. Absolutely. <laughs> now, Chris, you uh, have actually been around the track a little bit, so from a driver's standpoint, why don't you talk to us a little bit about Mid-Ohio? Well, you know, a lot of uh, what John says I have to echo. You know, it's really an old school track, and you can tell it was designed before they were, uh, they were designing them with computers. You know, you just have a feeling that, a guy walked out there with a tractor and said, you know, I think a turn would be great here. And, uh, and you know, it just flows so well. Uh, it's, a, it's just a great driver's track. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it is a difficult track to race on uh, just because uh, the limited number of passing zones. And so, you know, you got a couple of passing zones. Everybody knows where they are. Everybody is expecting uh, you to pass there. And, uh, and if you're going to make a pass stick anywhere else on the track, you really have to work hard uh, and set somebody up or get a little lucky, you know, somebody has to miss a shift or make a mistake. So, uh, you know, if you're up against a, a very good driver, it's, uh, it's tough, you know, because they have, uh, they're not making any mistakes. Uh, 
one thing you have to remember also is uh, you know, it is Ohio and uh, you better bring rain tires. Uh, not that it happens all the time, but at some place, you know, at some time during that weekend, it's probably going to rain. And uh, so it really helps to get some practice out there uh, running the rain line, which is completely different from the dry line. Uh, they put some sealant down on that track and it can be like ice in the rain. So uh, uh, some, if it rains, take advantage of the practice, no, certainly, most certainly when you're out there. So obviously people coming from a long ways away, they're gonna have a difficult time catching up with you guys. I mean, you're talking about rain lines, you're talking about only specific passing zones. Uh, so it sounds like some locals will probably do better than uh, the folks traveling all the way across country for the first time to go to Mid-Ohio. Well, I mean, there's no question about it that, you know, somebody with local knowledge, a lot of the guys out of the Midwest that race there all the time are going to have a certain advantage. Uh, you know, I'm only up there once a year, but have done pretty decently. So the nice thing about this weekend is that, you know, NASA has a, a practice day uh, prior to the, the championship starting. And then, of course, the track has a, a practice day before that. So you can get two very good, solid practice days in at that track. You know, and if you're lucky enough to uh, be able to jump in and get an instructor from the Mid-Ohio School, they can tune you up pretty quickly. If you're a decent driver and can pick up a track, uh, I think you still have a very good chance to, uh, to play and play out front at the championships. That's good advice. In fact, that takes us to our first break. When we come back, we're going to talk about each of us picking a person we think is going to do very well at the national championships. And if they're listening right now, they should definitely listen to the advice of Chris Gobetto. We'll be right back. Welcome to another episode of Racing No Filter. Joining me in sunny California, Bill Wood, and down in sunny Florida, Peter Keene. We're going to take a look at some of the products HPD has created for the 2012 Honda Civic. And specifically, we're going to show you an install and adjustable sway bar. Until then, folks out there, you take care. Welcome back to Speed News. Now we're going to talk about some people we think are going to do very well this year at the 2012 NASA National Championships over there in Mid-Ohio. And Chris, since you know a lot about the track, let's throw it to you first. Who's your pick? Well, I have to, uh, I've got a pick, but I'm, I'm going to keep you in suspense for just a moment because there are two honorable mentions that I really have to go through. And one is the champion from last year in Spec E30, Robert Grace. The guy I raced against personally, he is cool as a cucumber. He knows the track. Uh, he's been there before, and I really think the Spec E30 guys are going to have a, a tough time with them. The other, the other gentleman is Max Fisher. Now, Max Fisher has done very well regionally. He did very well at the championships last year, finish, starting at the back of the pack and making it up to sixth during that race. He has a brand new E92 V8 M3 he's bringing out to run in GTS4, uh, and he's hungry. But I don't think anybody's more hungry than Kevin Helms. Kevin Helms and Honda Challenge started out in a, a hyperdrive. Uh, during a Hyperfest in 2002. He has been to the championships regularly. He has had great battles, but always finished in that second spot, uh, many times in second, several times beyond that. I had a conversation with him this week, and he is motivated. He wants to be on that top rung of the podium. The guy knows wet, and he knows dry. He can drive in both kind of conditions, like we talked about. He knows the competition that is, is out there. He works on Hondas. He knows everything about this car. So you know the car, the car itself is going to be in tip-top shape. He is an excellent driver who's been racing for a long time and has a lot of national experience, and he is motivated. I, I call Kevin Helms for uh, the, uh, the top spot in Honda Challenge 1 this year. Now, Chris, we all know guys who've had that second place spot a couple times in big events, and it almost becomes a crutch for them. And uh, what do you think? Do you think that sometimes when you're so hungry for it, uh, things just sort of implode? I mean, you might have a great year all year long, but then when the championships come, it seems like everything just falls apart underneath them. Uh, what do you think about that for him? Well, you know, I, I, there's no question about it that, you know, the nerves get you when you're sitting in that car, no matter where, you know, no matter what is happening. Uh, but honestly, having won a few championships, you know, there's, there's nerves coming from the other side. You know, you, you feel like you need to win another one, and that's all that's good. So 
Uh, you know, really, it depends upon the driver themselves. You know, I, I, I think it's a great question. Calvin himself, he's been in the first spot. He's led some of these races. So he, it's, not, it's not like he, he hasn't knocked on that door. Uh, and he even said the last couple of races, it really could have gone either way. They had traded leads so many times. Just happened that, you know, at the end of the race, he was number two. So I don't think that's really bugging him so much. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's no question about it. It's, it's a mental game. You have to get out there and you have to realize that it's just a race, just like every other race, and, uh, and, and, and be relaxed. Because if you're nervous, you're going to miss shifts, you're going to miss braking zones, uh, you're not, and you're going to have a lot of mistakes. Uh, and for the guy who's relaxed, they really are going to have a, a better shot at it, I think. All right. For my pick, I went to the uh, Western Endurance Racing Championship group. Actually, I'm picking Emilio uh, Cervantes from the Work Series. He's a West Coaster. He's driving a uh, Performance Touring Challenge C um, car. It's uh, basically a Super Miata. That's what he names his team. And I'll tell you, he's been working hard all year long. Very competitive, very fast. Uh, he has a lot of competition to go against, obviously, with, with Mazda, the RX-8s. Uh, Dennis Holloway is going to be going against him. Mazda is a very good team, always in national championships and the endurance racing series. But I'll tell you, when it just comes to raw speed, uh, I've really seen Emilio put it down all year long as he drove by me a number of times uh, very quickly. And uh, even though he's not probably that familiar with the track, as some of the guys that will be there, I really like to see someone from California go over there and, uh, and put it down from an endurance racing aspect in a sprint race. So Emilio Cervantes, my pick for PTC. So, John, that leaves you. Who are you picking for a winner this year at the NASA National Championships? Well, I, I tell you, Rob, uh, this probably comes as no surprise, but I'm going to pick Chris Cabello to win uh, American Iron oh, this year. No. I think, uh, <laughs> you know, hopefully that, that's not a jinx for you, Chris, but uh, I, I really, you know, last year, uh, Chris and Dean Martin were going at it, and I think it could have gone either way, the whole race, uh, just like the battle that, uh, that Kevin Helms had with John Maris last year. Uh, it was great to watch from my booth in the, uh, in the Speedcast booth with uh, – Rob Klepper alongside me, and both of us were just saying, man, that, that one could have gone either way. So, Chris, I know you've uh, managed to uh, knock it out in Specky 30 a number of times at Mid-Ohio, and I think this is your year for AI. Well, I truly appreciate that vote of confidence, John. You know, we have a, uh, we have a few things in the works and up our sleeves uh, for this year. Uh, I've got a little more time in the car, so uh, no question about it. That's the, that's the spot I'm looking for. Well, you will be the man to beat in American Iron. Well, I, I appreciate that, John. I, I hope that's the case, but I got to tell you, those guys are tough, man. They are absolutely tough. A lot of those guys from the Midwest, uh, they, they give no quarter whatsoever. So I'm looking forward to it. It's really <laughs> going to be fun. So, Chris, let's talk about your platform a little bit. So, you know, let's talk about what you're running this year and how that changes American Iron really as a class against some of the guys running some of the older machines and stuff. What do you think? You know, a lot, there is a little bit of griping, honestly, you know, at the, uh, at the season's turn about some of the rules changes that were out there. But, you know, the reality is, is that if you take a look at last year's result in American Iron, so many of the S197 chassis cars, the Mustangs, were just dominant in there. And so, uh, you know, in, in our region anyway, we've had, we have a lot of Fox body Mustangs uh, that have been built out. And, uh, and the truth is, is that the racing is a lot more close, you know, it's a lot closer regionally uh, with, with those older chassis and with the newer chassis. Uh, in a longer race like this, I think that the, the lighter cars are probably going to have a, uh, a bit of an advantage because they're not working the tires quite as hard. Uh, they can get around the turns a little easier. Uh, but, you know, if it rains, having analog brakes is, uh, is just a, an incredible advantage, especially at that track. So it really, you know, a lot's going to depend upon the weather, but I do think actually that the, the rules uh, were done well. Uh, well, I've, I've got, we've got a few, we've got, you know, we've been tweaking the car a little bit. So the platform I have, the S197 chassis is just, it's just a pleasure to drive, honestly. It, Ford has done an, a wonderful job right out of the box, you know, and then uh, Performance Autosport, the shop that built the car, it's a Mustang RTR car. Uh, they've just done great things with the, with the new Motons that we have. Oh! Oh, I don't think I was supposed to tell anybody that, but with the new Motons that are on there, the, uh, and uh, so it's, the, the car's dialing in. I'm looking forward to it. All right, sounds good. Well, you heard it here. John Lindsay has picked Chris Cobetto to win the national championships. We'll find out if that's a speed news jinx uh, in September. <laughs> Let's take us to our next break. When we come back, we're going to talk about Hyperfest.
state your desires. Speed. Adrenaline. Competition. Calculating. Result in three, two, one. The National Auto Source Association. Start here. Welcome back to Speed News. Our guest host is Chris Cabetto, and he's here to talk to us about a really cool event called Hyperfest. So, Chris, why don't you explain to the viewers what that event is and talk about all the different things that happen at Hyperfest. Uh, well, I'm not exactly sure we have enough time to go over all of the things that happen at Hyperfest, but basically Hyperfest is if you took a regular NASA event and, uh, you know, with the HPD and the racing, and then you overlaid essentially a state fair uh, and a uh, music show. Uh, there are just so many things that go on at Hyperfest. Basically, the idea was a long time ago, this, we said, hey, look, well, we already have this facility, it's huge. Why don't we just invite somebody in to do a car show while we're doing one of the NASA events to try to introduce a lot of new people to uh, and basic enthusiasts to road racing and to what we do? Well, it sort of morphed into this thing now where. Uh, we, have, we have rollover contests where guys will build cars and they'll come out and roll over for a uh, roll their cars over on purpose for a $500 prize. Uh, we were the very first professional drifting uh, event in the country back in 2002. As a matter of fact, uh, Monster Energy Drinks, uh, Von Gittin Jr., who was out at this past Hyperfest doing uh, drifting ride alongs, got his start at Hyperfest uh, in drifting in the U.S. Drift Nationals. Uh, so there's road racing. We have the drift U.S. or uh, the uh, this particular past year we had uh, the XDC uh, drifting championships. We have the NASA Rally Sport guys are over there and they're giving rally rides. Uh, the facility itself has three asphalt tracks. We use them all, uh, plus a go-karting facility, and it has three off-road facilities, and we use those all. We have the 24 hours of lemons going on on one location, uh, one of the tracks. We have another track where we gave the drifting ride-alongs, and we also do a thing called hyperdrives, which essentially is a miniature HPDE. It's a single session HPDE. It's a taste test. And so in one day, we actually introduce 180 brand new people to on-track driving uh, with a single session HPDE in those hyperdrives. Uh, at nighttime, we have, uh, we have the rollover contest, we have live bands, uh, so it's a, it's a circus. It's a, it's really really uh, a lot of fun, uh, and we got thirteen thousand one hundred and thirty two attendees at this year's uh, this year's event. So you know, Coney and Monster Energy and the Marines and Mazda, Exidy, all the sponsors uh, that really helped us out uh, here for the event, and Paul Reed Smith Guitars. They were all really happy with those turnout with that turnout. Now, it sounds like a cool event. You say it's like a state fair. The most important thing to me is if I go there, can I get a foot long corn dog or uh, like a fried Twinkie? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I promise that we can get you some, uh, some sausage and peppers and a, and a funnel cake with plenty of uh, powdered sugar. We'll see. And I know there's a corn dog. Uh, whether we can get you a foot long corn dog, I'm not sure. But uh, if you let me know early enough, I'll let the vendors know for you. I know a guy. <laughs> Outstanding. Consider me to be there, man. Sounds like a good time. Well, you can tell Rob. Come on out. Speaking of a good Fresno. time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Rob, I tell you, you make it out. We'll make you a, we'll make you a Daisy. I forgot to mention the Daisy Dukes contest. We'll make you a Daisy Dukes con uh, contest judge. Hey, can I enter the contest? Oh, God, no. <laughs> uh, hey, I tell you what, you come out with John. We'll make John the judge and, and you can enter the contest. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think I want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Uh Drag Daisy Duke contest and some foot long corn dogs. Sounds like a good time, man. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, anybody that's looking at this screen, this is probably, knowing that you might be in the contest, might be bringing my numbers down for next year, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, speaking of good times, let's talk about this month's GoPro move of the month, and we'll take it to you, John. What do you got for us this month? All right, well, we've got some great footage here from uh, our old pal, Sean Sampson, uh, Sampson Racing, Racing Communications, longtime NASA sponsor and uh, old buddy of mine. And uh, this is a great move. This is from California Speedway out in uh, Fontana, California, uh, during an endurance racing session. And uh, Sean is uh, going to show us uh, a little bit of uh, real driving skill here. So, uh, gentlemen, if you will turn to your NASA Vision 6000 uh, consoles, we'll get started here <laughs> on my mark. And here we go. So what you're seeing now is uh, 
He's, Sean is coming around, kind of bleeding out onto the edge, and then there comes that other RJ Racing car right there, uh, right beside him. They have a little kind of touch there, maybe a little uh, you know modification. Ooh. They're both going for the same apex right together. Sean gets a little loose. Whoa! Whoa! And he's oh. around, eastbound and down, doesn't even lift, and he's back on it. So that is, uh, wow. I mean, what a move. Cool under fire. Uh, just kept on going like nothing happened except for four flat-spotted tires. So... Way to go, Sean. You are our GoPro Hero of the Month. You know, I talked to Sean, and he did come back from that and continue racing. He actually just put it back into gear and just kept on going like it never happened. Oh, that's just, that, that is just great. I, I, I've had similar situations, and generally speaking, I've got the wipers going, and I've got the, uh, I've got the <laughs> turn signals going, and uh, <laughs> getting back on track with flat-spotted tires and turning all that stuff off is lots of fun. It's always a bad sign when you're driving the car and the horn starts to go off. If you still have that on the car and windshields, wipers start going, blinkers, everyone around you knows <laughs> you're just elbows and fists all over that steering wheel trying to make That's things right. happen. So uh, never a good thing to be uh, coming off of that car. It's a dead giveaway to the crowd like he's got problems in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Another great episode of Speed News. And if you uh, watchers out there would like to send your video in, send it to um, Speed News at DriveNASA.com. And we'd love to feature it here on the show. And uh, make sure you watch your, for your next new copy of our magazine, Speed News, at uh, nasaproracing.com. Thanks a lot, gentlemen, and we'll see you next month here on GoRacingTV.com. <laughs>